Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, let's talk about compression. Let's consider this um, episode two of compression. So in episode one, I just kind of went on at length about the different controls and the kind of theory behind uh, using a compressor and, and uh, setting up the controls. Uh, today, let's actually just play with a couple of compressors, all right? So I'll pick a software compressor and then uh, I'll use a couple of my hardware compressors here. and. Uh, kind of explore the features a little bit, uh, see what happens uh, to the sound uh, as we actually kind of adjust some of the uh, parameters on it. So I think today I'm just gonna use a stereo drum bus or a stereo drum track, just all the microphones uh, mixed together in a stereo track. And um, yeah, let's uh, see what all we can do with it, all right? Here, let's hop on the computer. All right, well, let's uh, fire up Reaper here. And um, let's do just something kind of simple, and uh, let's find a drum bus, a, or a, a drum part here. Wait till he comes up, all right. Let's start a, uh, whoops. Okay, let's start a new project here. And uh, let's see, uh, I'm gonna use, I don't know, Easy Drummer. So I'm just gonna right click and uh, insert new virtual instrument on track. I'm uh, gonna go to VSTi, and I'm gonna find Easy Drummer. And in this case, now I don't really want to build all the multi-outputs for this one, so just create it as a stereo track. All right, good deal. I hope that you can see this all right. This is kind of my first time trying to uh, record this kind of huge resolution, uh, 3440 by 1440. Um, uh, trying to get this scaled down and zoomed in or whatever I'm going to have to do to get it to work for uh, just kind of a standard 1080 for YouTube. Uh, I don't know. So we'll see what happens here. I'll, uh, I'll figure it out in post, I guess. Okay, so we got Easy Drummer set up. Uh, let's use, uh, I don't know. I'm not too big of a fan of that kit. So let's use their Pop Rock kit. Just in basic, basic preset mode. All right. Uh, let's go to the browser and let's find a, a, a like a loop here that has uh, maybe some you know some kick and snare but also some crash symbol and I don't know maybe like a ride symbol because when you're dealing with compression, uh, those low frequencies, like of the kick drum, uh, tend to be the first ones to make the compressor react, and you can kind of you can really hear that in the cymbals. Uh, so let's see if we can find a uh, loop here that's kind of got what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use like the uh, New York Avatar, so that comes with Superior Drummer. So let's go to the straight four four. And uh, yeah, symbol variations. Let's audition one or two of these and see what we come up with. Actually, I'm going to put on my headphones so I can hear what I'm doing here. All right. Uh, let's see what this one sounds like. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, you know, those have kind of what we're looking for, you know, some, uh, well, that one didn't, but, yeah, that's got a crash symbol, he's, you know, on the ride there, maybe a little busy, but, here, let's try this other, uh, there we go, a little less busy. All right, I think that's got everything we're looking for. It's got crash symbol, ride symbol, uh, not a super busy uh, kick and snare kind of arrangement there. So let's use that one. Let's drag that into our project. There we go. All right, now I, um, I usually have my mixer on a separate monitor and the one big giant monitor here, I don't know what to do with it. I'm just gonna scoot it out of the way for now. Uh, all right, I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna grab a edge of this and I'm just gonna loop it for, I don't know, Five minutes, something like that. Right in there somewhere. All right, perfect. All right, so um, yeah, here, let's give it a quick play here, make sure we, uh... all right, good. Okay, now we can see it, it's actually clipping here. So we get the mixer back in view. So that's pretty loud. So let's bring that down, maybe about six dB or so. Let's clear the clip indicator. So he's peaking at about, eh, minus two dB. 
Okay, I'll stop them there. So peaking at minus two dB, that's probably hotter than you're gonna want your drums in just an average project. Uh, I'd recommend, you know, uh, having them peak at around maybe minus six, it is just so you have plenty of headroom up above that. But what we're gonna do here is add compression to this, which knocks down those peaks, so the peaks will be less of a problem here for us. All right, so let's, um, oh, let's see. Let's find a software compressor. All right, so this is a stereo track that I'm working with, right? It's all the drums mixed together. So we're gonna want a stereo or a two-channel compressor. Uh, if you use a mono or a single-channel uh, compressor, uh, it collapses all that stereo information. You know, it, it makes it you know narrow, just right straight down the middle. So if you have your hi hat over here and your crash over here and your your toms are kind of arrayed out, you know, from from you know left to right, one direction to the other, um, all that's just going to be collapsed. So everything's going to be straight down the middle if you run it through a, a mono effect, right? So we're going to want to find a, a two-channel or a stereo. Uh, compressor here to work with. So let's see what I have available. I'm going to click on the effects window and uh, bring up uh, okay so we have easy drummer on here so let's uh, add a new effect. And it's not a VSTI that I'm looking for it's just a VST. So down here in the filter oh let's see I'm just gonna type comp C-O-M-P and let's see what all that brings up. So we have uh, Blockfish which is a, a, a free compressor that, uh, that you can get. Um, we have a few Waves compressors here. The Classic Compressor, which is another uh, freebie. Uh, some more Wave stuff. Uh, stuff from Melda and uh, Antress, uh, which are free. And uh, the uh, Rhea Comp and Rhea X Comp, which actually come included with Reaper. Uh, for this example, just because I've used it probably more than any of these other compressors and I know uh, that it's stereo, I'm going to use H-Comp from Waves. Now this is not a free uh, a compressor here, but uh, it, I got this one in the gold bundle. I think it's a great compressor. And it has all the controls that we discussed in episode one of compression, uh, plus a few other kind of bells and whistles, and we'll kind of ignore those a little bit. So like this analog, uh, this is like a saturation uh, type effect. So let's just turn that off because uh, that's really not what we're focusing on today. But you can see some of the uh, familiar controls, the ratio, the attack and release. You can see the threshold and then an output volume. Now this one also has a wet dry mix so you can do stuff like um, you know add a lot of compression to something and just really squash it and then mix in some of the dry signal so all those transients and peaks that are being uh, basically shaved off by the compressor you can start to mix those back in and um, get, you can get some cool effects that way we're not really gonna worry about parallel compression um, today uh, we're mainly just gonna focus on our familiar type uh, controls here and you know this punch control here as well is something honestly I don't even really know what that does um, I, I've played with it but I, I don't know in the context of compression controls really what punch uh, in this uh, uh, control set really does so I'm just gonna leave this turned all the way down and just rely on our familiar controls okay so I've got so let's turn the threshold all the way to zero so that means that the signal would have to exceed zero dB in order for the compressor to, to start, you know, to, to act and actually do anything. So it, it, as long as we're not clipping, as you can see, I turned the signal down there. So that zero dB threshold is going to be too high for anything to really trigger it. So the compressor isn't going to be doing anything. Uh, as far as our uh, ratio, uh, it just defaults to three here. So yeah, let's leave it there. Three is kind of a nice, uh, gentle compression. Uh, our attack and release are both right in the middle of their adjustment, so let's leave those there. I'm just going to press play and let's see uh, what we hear. Okay, you can actually see like our gain reduction needle. So this is set to GR, which is gain reduction. So this shows us the compressor is actually doing something. Uh, since we're not exceeding 0 dB, I'm kind of a little curious about that myself, but um, eh, we'll just roll with it here. Okay, so now as I start to turn the threshold down, you can see the gain reduction needle on those peaks when the kick and snare hit really starts to jump.
and you can really start to hear the uh, the kick and snare sound. Really kind of get a little, I don't know how to describe it, you know, this is dancing about architecture here, but um, they get a, a little kind of soft and spongy and they, they get, you know, a, a little kind of spanky almost, so. Now, if we start to crank the ratio up, this is gonna make the, the compression more extreme. So let's turn that up to maybe eight. It's subtle, but you can hear a difference. Now let's turn the ratio or the threshold back down. You know, it sounds, you know, it sounds like a drum set in a room. It just sounds like a, a drum set. As we start to crank that threshold up to really trigger a lot more gain reduction, you can hear it just, you can hear a little bit more of the room. You can hear, uh, uh, I don't know, just like the tails of everything that's happening. You can just hear those exaggerated. So, uh, you know, at, at this kind of level of compression, you know, eight to one ratio uh, and, a, and a low uh, threshold so that we're getting, you know, 12 and even up to 24 dB of gain reduction, you know, that's a lot. So I'm using kind of extreme settings here for demonstration. Um, that's almost a special effect kind of thing. You know, you're probably not gonna want your drums to sound like that all the time, but it's cool for an effect, right? So let's play a little bit with the attack and release, and let's see uh, what kind of effect with these kind of extreme settings that I've got going on here. Let's see uh, really what the attack and release kind of do. So let's start up our uh, player again. And I'm gonna start cranking down the attack, make the attack much, much faster. And let's get the attack all the way as fast as it'll go. Well, as you can see, it makes the, it makes the needle jump even more uh, because we're, we're asking it to do even more gain reduction because it, it's acting so much more quickly on those peaks. Uh, but also you start to hear some distortion in there. So listen to the kick drum here. Right, so that kick drum is distorted, and, and so that, that super fast attack, it's having such a dramatic effect on the waveform of, of the, the signal that it's producing distortion. You know, if you, it, uh, if you start to mess with uh, the peaks of waveforms, uh, that's pretty much how you generate distortion. That's how a guitar amp does it, and, and, it, and in this context, is how we do it here as well. Uh, that's probably not a desirable thing. Again, a special effect, something kind of cool. Uh, but let's, uh, let's turn the attack all the way up to its slowest setting and see uh, how that makes a difference compared to its fastest setting. So there's just a neutral mid setting. Let's turn it all the way up. All right, so in that case, you can really hear, kind of, it starts to uh, bring the room a little bit more into it, especially on the snare uh, for, for whatever, you know, kind of unique characteristics that snare sound has. Um, you can all of a sudden start to hear more of the room, particularly on the snare and you can hear a little bit more of the the uh, the tail of the snare. So after that initial impact, you can you can kind of hear the the ring, the the actual snares vibrating against the the uh, uh, the bottom head. And then all the way down again, really distorted, quieter, because. We're, you know, we're peaking at like 24 dB of gain reduction here. And with the attack super slow, yeah, we're peaking less than 12 dB. So with a faster attack, things are gonna sound more compressed. With this compressor in particular, things are gonna start to get distorted, uh, which it may be desirable for you, it may not. Uh, with a more neutral, just kind of middle of the road attack, uh, that's kind of, this seems to be kind of the sweet spot here for this compressor. So, still kind of poppy, snappy. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the attack there in that middle position and let's play with the release. Now, for the most part with a release, uh, a really fast release, 
if you think about it, is um, so your signal is at a, at, at a certain amplitude and then the compressor kicks in and it drops the signal. Um, the release controls how quickly it actually returns back to that initial level. Um, with a very fast release, you're going to hear probably the initial transient, it's going to duck real quick, and then it's going to be returned back to a normal gain uh, very, very quickly. And so that tends to emphasize kind of the, the tail of, of things, like in a, in a drum kit. So like for a tom, you'll hear a little bit more of the note that the tom is tuned to. And for the snare, you'll hear a little bit more of the, like, like the rattle or the, the snares vibrating against the... Um, uh, uh, a bottom head and with a slower release like especially with like a really slow release if you think about like those uh, that feature on TVs that tries to kind of level out the sound so that commercials don't sound as loud um, compared to the regular program material with our, those probably have like a really slow release because what you're hoping to accomplish with a really slow release is as soon as something ex exceeds your threshold you want the gain reduction to happen and then not really return back to normal gain in case something else also uh, comes along and peaks up ab above your threshold. Uh, so it's really more for like leveling program material like you would use at a, I don't know, a radio station or for a television station. Um, for it, it's really more for leveling program material as a whole. So the problem with more uh, longer release times is that you're probably going to hear more pumping. So let me, um, so with the, again, with these extreme settings here, let's start uh, this back up and listen to the cymbals every time the kick drum hits. Like listen to that ride cymbal. And with the slower release times, you'll hear that ride cymbal kind of be uh, periodically drop in volume and then come back to normal and drop in volume and come back to normal. We call that pumping. And that is not necessarily a desirable thing to hear when you're using a compressor. If you're hearing pumping, uh, then you probably need to adjust some of your settings. Maybe turn down, uh, uh, you know, back off on the threshold. Uh, maybe uh, back off on the ratio. And probably you're going to need to adjust your release time. So let's, let's see if we can induce some pumping here and see what it sounds like. Yeah, like there. You can hear that ride cymbal and the crash cymbal. Now let's wait till it gets back to that part in the loop. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So you can you can start to hear the volume is kind of playing some tricks, and and with that slower release, the the compressor hasn't recovered. You know, so this is this is a rhythmic thing we're listening to here. So there's there's a certain cadence to uh, where all the power comes in. You know, in each measure, in each uh, in each beat of each measure, even. So you can really start to hear, especially uh, when the kick drum hits, and it, uh, you know, that's a low frequency thing, it's really loud, it makes the uh, compressor clamp down, and when the compressor clamps down, since we've got this compressor across the whole drum bus, it turns everything down. And you can really hear that manifest in the cymbals in this case. Okay, all right, let's uh, see what happens if we just turn the release all the way up to its absolute slowest speed. Okay, for the most part, it just got quieter as a whole. It's a lot more just kind of level and even. And that's kind of what I would expect here. With that slow release, the release barely has time to start to recover before the next kick or snare or whatever makes the compressor clamp down again. And so it just, you just kind of end up with this very even, uh, it, it, there's not a whole lot of dynamics going on here. There's not much pop or punch going on. All right, so now let's play with the release and let's turn it to a really fast release. Okay. 
you can start to hear some of that distortion creeping in again. And again, with that really fast release, we're just messing with those with the peaks on the waveforms enough to generate some distortion. Um, it sounded like there was kind of almost a sweet spot of distortion there. Um, well, I call it a sweet spot, kind of like a, a uh, um, major spot there. So let's uh, play it again. Somewhere in here. Yeah, around in there, the kick drum's kind of starting to distort again. So if we combine that with a really fast attack. Yeah. So we're inducing a lot of distortion there, but you don't really hear any pumping, right? That it's recovering so quickly due to the fast release that you're not really hearing that volume swell and ebb and flow. It, it, it just sounds more aggressive, right? So if you're wanting something to just kind of sound, well, yeah, aggressive, kind of in your face a little bit, a faster release time will help accomplish that. So, so, so let's set the attack back to kind of a normal setting. Uh, middle of the road setting here. Let's listen, listen to the to the uh, loop again, and let's see if we can kind of find a sweet spot to where we don't get any audible pumping, but it sounds just kind of nice and aggressive, like with a fast release. And I'm, I'm mainly listening to the ride symbol. That's kind of my. That's kind of my cue for how much pumping we have going on here. But I want to listen to the kick drum and not dial it in so that it's going to distort. Somewhere in here, I think that sounds all right. It sounds kind of, kind of loud and aggressive. You can hear a lot of the room in there. All right, yeah, I don't know. I, to me, I love compressors. I love compression. This stuff's just fun to me. I, I love just hearing these effects. So. All right, now let's try a couple of hardware compressors. Uh, I'll uh, loop the same drum loop through my distressors here, and we'll play around with those a little bit and see some of the features they have to offer. Okay, so I am just gonna disable HComp here, and I'm gonna add an instance of REAI, which is REA insert. All right, this is just how I loop hardware in as an insert. So you get to pick uh, which physical uh, outputs from your interface you send through. And this is, you know, you pick a left and you pick a right. Uh, if you're doing mono, you just pick the same one for left and right. So I already have analog three and four claimed right now. So I'm gonna use analog five and six out and for the return, again, these are physical inputs on your interface. So, and again, if you want to use mono, you pick the same one for both. I'm going to do stereo here. So I want to come back on, uh, yeah, let's do come back on five and six as well. So input five and six. All right, so let's, um, let's do a quick test here and make sure I'm getting a little bit of a signal out. So I'll press play. All right, good. Okay, you can see here it's actually clipping a little bit. So I guess just to make sure we're not going to distort on the way out, let's turn that down by a few dB. If it's clipping a little bit, that's okay. You know, by one dB, okay. You know, I, I'm okay. I'm comfortable with that. So let's go take a look over on the distressors themselves. I'll go ahead and just let this play. And uh, you can hear it, you know, it's really quiet. But the good news is, okay, we're sending out and we are receiving back. So I have everything hooked up right. So if you're not seeing signal here, you need to examine your routing and uh, uh, see what's wrong. So, all right, over here on the distressors. Okay, so uh, these LEDs right here, there's a strip on each of them that shows which um, uh, compression ratio we're set to right now. So right now they're both set to one to one. So they're not really doing any compression. So let's pick a gentle kind of compression. So a three to one. And now you can see these LED strips start to light up to actually, these are the gain reduction. So you can actually start to see a little bit of gain reduction. All right, I am using these in stereo. So uh, I wanna link them together so we don't get this, these weird imbalances in our uh, stereo image. So. In the detector circuit, I'm just gonna press them both until the link 
button or the link LED lights up on both of them. So now they're actually communicating with each other and, and uh, that'll help kind of keep our stereo image a little more stable. All right, so this is a compressor like I discussed in episode one where there's no threshold, there's no threshold control. Instead, they have a fixed threshold. And so you just crank the input uh, in order to uh, make the signal exceed that fixed threshold. You know, we don't know what that threshold is. We don't really care. Well, we care more about how much gain reduction we're getting. So we're getting, this is peaking at about five or six dB of gain reduction. So let, I don't know, let's kick it in the pants a little bit more and let's turn it up just a little bit more. And now, you know, peaking at 10 and 12. Let's give it a little bit of output here because it's pretty darn quiet. Especially when we're reducing the peaks by 12 dB. So let's crank it up just a little more. That's starting to get back into the, in the real ter territory. Actually, back on the uh, instance of Rhea insert, we can actually see we're clipping on the way back in. So that's probably just a little too loud. You know, it, it, it only exceeded, it, it hit the zero dB mark. So um, I'll clear that. Yeah, and it just goes right back to the zero dB mark. So yeah, let's back them off just a half a dB or so. Just to make sure we're not gonna distort anywhere that we don't mean to distort. All right, you know, that didn't really sound too bad, but that ride symbol's pumping on us again. So one cool feature of the distressors is that they actually have, um, in the detector circuit, you can filter out the low frequencies so that the kick is no longer gonna be the main driver in when we clamp down. So on both of these, and I'll press the button one more time and that LED lights up. So now we actually have essentially side-chained an EQ into this compressor. And let's go to a more aggressive, um, whoops, that's the bypass button. Let's go to a more aggressive compression. So let's go to like a 10 to one. Oh yeah, that's starting to sound kind of nasty. You know, starting to get that, same, remember that same kind of spanky sound we got on the uh, software compressor? And let's start turning that release down. Let's turn the release down to almost as low as it'll go. And you can hear, you hear a lot of the room, you, especially on the snare. You hear, um, you hear the environment the drum kit is recorded in. Uh, it's just kind of like a aggressive, just kind of raw, kind of dirty sound. But honestly, I think that sounds pretty badass. I think that sounds pretty good. Like I, 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 I would use that, I'd use that in a mix. I think that sounds pretty good. And you hear less pumping uh, because that kick drum is not driving the, the detector circuit anymore. The snare drum is. All right, all right, here, I'll stop that now. Okay, yeah, so we see back on, um, uh, in Rhea insert here that, you know, yeah, we were still kind of hitting that zero dB mark. It didn't exceed it by very much, but uh, if I were doing a mix, I'd probably be a little more careful about uh, making sure I don't clip the output and, and distort something in an unpleasant way uh, and making sure that I don't clip my input um, and, and again, distort in an unpleasant way. If we're gonna cause distortion, we wanna cause good sounding distortion, right? We don't wanna cause distortion that, that sounds crackly or, or fizzy or anything. We want, we want you know, warm, natural, uh, harmonic distortion. Uh, and that's something you can induce by the things that we played with today with these compressors here. All right, well, I hope this has been at least a little bit of fun for you. I know it's been fun for me. I, it's always fun for me just because I enjoy playing with these kinds of toys. Um, uh, you know, trying to get my, my new room kind of set up here. So this has been, uh, this has been a good time. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions or uh, anything like that, leave them in the comments below. If you like to play with compressors, if you've gotten some cool effects out of them, uh, if you've gotten some awful effects out of them, uh, or if you're struggling or having trouble or anything, yeah, 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 leave a comment below and, and uh, you know, we can talk about it a little bit. All right, I'll see you guys next time and have a good one. All right, later.